When last we left our intrepid adventurers, the party is awoken by the sound of death masters nearby. They prepare for the onslaught of the undead things. Seraph has just realized that he's going to be a father soon, but doesn't have time to think too much about it. As the death masters roll into the camp, he can hear Finn singing to disrupt the waves of fear brought on by the black breath the death masters use. Seraph parries an attack and then moves in. The creature batters him back and he finds himself almost struck by the undead. A little further away, Ulysses doesn't believe what he's seeing, a creature of mist and air, but its blows are as hard as iron. He parries a strike and then strikes it with a major blow that pushes the fiend to the ground. Akai's reflexes save her as one of the undead spirits strikes at her. She turns and tosses daggers at her opponent, but they hang in the spirit body for just a moment and then fall uselessly to the ground. Scala can't believe what she sees. To her, they're not gaseous opponents. Rather, they are men and women dressed in cloaks and ghost-like finery. One of them glances at her and says, Sister, join us now and let it be over. Scala's spell that she was preparing is torn from her mind by that, and she has to start again. Australia steps in front of Scala, and, holding her fingers spread apart, a fountain of enchanted fire pours from between her fingers. She plays it up and down the wraith, and even the ectoplasm it's made of seems to catch fire. The thing screams and discorporates, blowing back some of the fire on Australia. Finn finds himself at the back of the party, and he struggles to sing a song of hope and valor against the dirge of the black breath. He trips over a tree root and falls on his behind, but he is in a place where he thinks of nothing but the song, and only his death could stop him from singing it now. Seraph punches and kicks, as well as striking with his blade, his body feels stiff from where he's touched the fiend, but still he fights. Ulysses doesn't give the monster a chance to get up. He uses his weapon two-handed to strike and slice the creature. Scala resets her mind, and a spell of forbidding fills the campsite. The undead are put on the defensive as the spell seeks to push them away. Australia rains explosive bolts of fire on the closest creature and keeps it at bay. Seraph, his arm numb from the touch of the Death Master, charges the creature and brings his blade up in a move that would gut any other creature. But this is not flesh and blood, and Seraph hears a raspy laugh in the throat of the monster as it moves in to kill him. Ulysses sees what's happening to Seraph, and he deliberately turns his back on his opponent so he can shield Seraph. Ulysses the Wanderer roars and battles the creature over Seraph. Although he is stabbed from behind by his opponent, Ulysses brings his weapon to bear on Seraph's creature and again and again thrusts his blade in and hacks. His blade finds purchase, and the Death Master discorporates in a rush of air and spirit. Scala and Australia both target the last creature that is attacking Ulysses from behind. Australia, the Fire Mage, plays a lash of witch fire around and through the wraith, and Scala buffets it with a blast of pure force. The Death Master's ectoplasmic body is blown apart, and the creature is gone. Seraph goes to one knee as he copes with the pain of the undead touch to his leg, while Finn and Akai go over to help Ulysses. They find his body cold and unresponsive. Akai places her hand 
on his frozen chest and pronounces Ulysses the Wanderer is no more. He's dead. <laughs>